Hi everybody, Josh from York Maze here and welcome back to Craft Corner. Today we're going to be focusing on the origami pigs or origami or origami. That's all I can come up with, I'm afraid. And this little crow which is made out of a, a bin bag and some blue tack. Also, as always, I'll be doing as many puns as I possibly can. So, without further ado, let's get crackling. Now, origami is all about folding paper. Pigs are pink, so ideally you could do with some pink paper. If you don't have that though, that's fine. You could make some by colouring in some plain paper or even painting it in any shade of pink that you want. I've got this pink paper, so I'll use this, and I need it to be a square, so measure all the sides to be exactly the same and make sure you have a perfect square to start. Now you're going to fold that square in half and then in half again, and that's going to create quarters. So make it nice and tight on those folds so that when you open it up, you've got a cross in the middle. Now, from the corner, fold into the middle of the cross. You're going to do this on two of the sides. So one like this and the other one on the opposite side. Fold them like that. And then on the bottom, you're going to fold the sides in horizontally. So the edge of the paper matches up with that center line. Snout wrong with that. Pun number one, away we go. <laughs> now, this bottom section down here, you're going to fold the corners up to the middle line. So do it on one and then do it on the pork chop as its side as well. <laughs> I'm flying through these puns. So you'll have something that looks a little bit like this. Now here's the tricky bit. So you might need to watch this a couple of times. These triangular flaps at the bottom, you need to sort of open them up and the inside corner folds up and on to the vertical center. As I say, you might need to watch it a couple of times. I will show you from another angle as well. So what you do is you, you open it up and then the inside corner sort of pushes out and up so that the edge can go along to the middle and then you flatten it down. So you've got two extra triangular flaps. There you go. Next, you're gonna turn the whole thing over and fold it in half along this center line that we made at the start. So fold it nice and neatly along that half and you'll have something that looks like this. Now the side without the flaps on, you're gonna fold that up so the pointy bit goes past the top of the flat side. That's the side without the flaps on. Fold it like that and make sure there's a little bit of overhang as well because that's gonna be the pig's tail. Now, the triangular flaps are gonna turn into the pig's ears. So I would say don't make a pig's ear of it, but that would be counterproductive. Fold the edge up along the horizontal line like that and then fold it back over to create a little ear shape. I'll show you on the other side. So you're folding edge to edge and then fold it back on itself to create the ears. And then the final section is we're gonna just create a little snout. So just fold that little triangular section up and then we're gonna fold the whole thing in half along this line. Fold it in half, make sure you fold the snout and the tail onto that as well. And then you can see it's starting to look a bit more like a pig. But now we need to make it a little bit less long faced because it's not a horse. So push in from the snout and fold back the sections over behind the ears. So do it on both sides, kind of pushing it back and it'll fold into itself and that will make the face a little bit flatter like a pig. You can also afford at this stage to kind of pull the snout out a little bit like I'm doing now and that just gives it a little bit more of a 3D effect and if you fold the ears as well, it really gives your little origami pig some character. This is another quite fiddly bit, but it's not as intricate. We can afford to be a little bit rougher. We're gonna be creating the shape of some legs and it's quite fiddly, as I say, but really what you're doing is you're sort of just molding the paper by pushing in with your thumbs and sort of shaping the paper to create the shape of some legs with an indent in between them. Some of the folds might pop out at this stage, but you can pop them back in in a minute, that's fine. Really sort of mold those legs and you also might wanna give the tail a little bit of a bend up as well and once you've done all of that the shape of your pig is corn pleat I'm gonna add some details with a pen so I've got the nostrils on the snout and the eyes and I also think a nice little details if you get a brown felt tip pen or some paint or even some real mud you can create the effect of some muddy splats and there we go that's the finished product of an origami pig if you had a really small bit of paper you could create a really tiny pig 
Piggy Smalls, I like to call him. If you didn't use pink paper, your pig might look something like this, and that's why you need to get your felt tip pens or your paint out and colour it in afterwards, like I've done here. But enough of the pigs now, because we're moving on to our bin bag and blue tack crow. We're going to start this little project by softening the blue tack a little bit. So give it a stretch and a roll and a fiddle around in your hands, get it nice and soft, and then separate it into two thirds and a third. Roll those into small little balls and then place one on top of the other to create essentially a bit of a snowman shape, or should I say, a crow man shape. Put that to one side and then using scissors, we're going to kind of shred the bin bag. So just chopping up, you really don't need to be neat here, but do be careful. Mind your fingers and get a grown up to help you with the scissors. Shred the bin bag and then any of the bigger bits, you want to sort of trim those into slightly smaller bits because what we're creating is feathers. And you can see there I've created lots of little bin bag feathers. Now we're going to roll the body into the feathers and because it's made of blue tack, obviously they're all going to stick to it. So just roll or crawl. Not a word, doesn't work as a joke, but I'm rolling with it. <laughs> hey, rolling with it. So we're essentially covering the body in feathers. If you need to pick some up and stick it to it, that's great as well. Now it's haircut time. If you've got any excess, just give those a trim, being careful with the scissors again, and you'll have something that looks like this. Keep hold of a couple of little pieces of the bin bag. They're gonna be the wings a little bit later on. Next, we're gonna move on to the beak. I made mine out of a matchstick, but what I did was I cut it in half and then I colored it in yellow because crows have got yellow beaks. Or they do at York Mays anyway. <laughs> because the head's made of blue tack, it should just push past the bin bags and straight inside the head like that. If you want your beak to be a bit longer, you can use some yellow card or color in some plain paper, cut a triangle and fold it in half. This means it'll fit quite easily over the top of the matchstick or cocktail stick or whatever you used. So glue it on and there you go. A crow with a nice long yellow beak. Aye, aye. I can see what's coming next. <laughs> Draw your eyes onto a piece of paper, cut them out and stick them on. A little tip from me, when you do your pupils in the centre of the eyes, leave a little bit of white in the middle. And that'll really start to bring your crow character to life. Now, to be honest, I'm just going to let you wing the last bit. Cool! I'm a professional at these puns, aren't I? Glue your wings on and then you're finished. So there you go. There's some little creatures to go on your York Maze model, all shapes and all sizes. If you want some extra little bits, I've made a bridge out of lollipop sticks, as you can see. I've also made some fences out of match sticks, and uh, they sort of go into the base if you just punch a couple of holes into your cardboard and then sort of push the fence into it. If you want to glue it, that might make it a bit more secure. But there's more than one way to skin a cat, so why not get imaginative and find any sort of bits that you've got lying around, maybe in your Lego box. These are what I found in mine. I actually built a bridge, and you'll see that my origami pigs and crows fit quite conveniently onto there. So get creative, use your imagination, and I'll see you back here soon for another craft corner.